So we are going to be deep diving um, Nomuragon here. And I want to talk all about it. I've never seen anything about this raid. I've never seen any of the bosses. I've never seen any of the guides. I've never seen any of the live streams. I don't know a goddamn thing. So I'm going to put this here. Let's crank up the audio. Um, this is Sarth's video, Nomergon Raid Guide, Season of Discovery. Here we go. Let's do it. Here's a quick Nomergan Raid Guide. A Nomer is tuned quite a bit harder than BFD, so you might need to know some of the mechanics for most of the encounters if you want to clear it week one. So okay. with that being said, let's dive right in. <clears throat> the first boss is named Grubbis, and he spawns after a few ad waves you have to deal with. During the ad waves, you'll also notice a green gas cloud moving around the room. This is just basically chasing players, and it should chase the player nearest to it, just like the Molten Lava Totem from BFD. Don't get hit by this gas cloud as it will hurt you. Make sure to drag the trog adds into the gas cloud because they will explode killing the trogs and getting rid of the gas cloud. You know what? Because I'm tanking this. Do you guys mind if I make some notes? Do you guys care? Uh, Grubbus. I'm going to make notes as, as we do this. Okay, hold up here. I'm going to rewind moving around the room this is just basically chasing players and it should chase the player nearest to it just like the molten lava totem from bfd don't uh -huh. get hit by this gas cloud as it will hurt you make sure to drag the trog adds into the gas cloud because they will explode killing the trogs and getting rid of the gas cloud it's okay let's make this font a little bit smaller okay this is grubbus okay uh okay avoid Avoid gas clouds, um, drag adds at like 10% into cloud to kill them. Okay. Self. And while this gas cloud is up, the whole raid will... Re you know what, just so, just so we can have the notes on screen as I do this. Why don't we do this? I'm going to put that right there. And then I'm going to have the notes here. And that way I can make the notes while we watch this. Wow, that's smart. Receive a pulsing AoE nature damage, and this will be important later on. On the boss himself, oh. have the off tank pick up the Basilisk pet. This is basically because the pet will randomly de-aggro and randomly aggro on someone else. Just taunt him back here and keep DPSing Grubbis. And gas clouds will keep spawning faster as time goes on, so it's a little bit of a DPS race. Make sure okay. to keep dragging the adds into the gas cloud, and don't let the gas cloud reach the boss, or else it will enrage the boss. At 20%, the boss oh. enrages anyways and starts hitting the tank for a ton of damage. Make sure to save some cooldowns for this because you'll also probably have multiple gas clouds doing a ton of AoE damage to the entire raid. You can also utilize AoE heals and having a Shadow Priest could make this raid a lot easier with Vampiric Embrace, but I suggest using a Nature Protection Potion to burn the boss down. After you defeated the boss himself, you still have to beat his pet Chomper, so just know you're not done with the fight completely yet. Okay. Discus Fallout. Make sure you tank the boss away from these little bracers you see on the ground. These are called Desiccated Fallouts, so just drag the boss as far away from these as you can, because the boss will spawn three irradiated goos. And these three goos... What, what are you pulling him away from? What's that? Uh... Okay. They're called desiccated fallouts, so just drag the boss as far away from these as you can. Okay. Um, uh, it's it's called it's called desiccated, desecrated or desiccated. I don't fucking know. Desiccated fallout. Maybe that's what it's called. I actually want to know what's it called. It's called. Be on the ground. These are called desiccated fallouts, so just drag the boss as far away from these. Who cares? As you can, because the boss will spawn three irradiated goos. And these three goos will move directly towards those bindings on the ground. If they reach those bindings, they will spawn an ad that you have to deal with. So you can CC and slow these goos and burn them down whenever they spawn. The boss himself will actually spawn a poison cloud underneath them. It's a little bit hard to see, like the visual isn't super clear, but just make sure you're continuously dragging the boss away from that whenever it spawns. Crowd Pummeler is probably the first challenge for most groups and most pugs because there's a lot of self-responsibility going on here. The boss will throw out two cogwheels that spin around the room. If they hit you, they knock you back and they can't actually continue oh. knocking you back to literally knock you off the platform. And if the This is a big time retard check. 
This is a big retard check. Been around the room. If they hit you, they knock you back and they can't actually continue knocking you back to literally knock you off the platform. And if this happens, you just fall down and die. Be yeah. aware, anyone that actually dies this way will have their corpse put in the front of the room so you can battle res them or oh, that's can good. use soul stones. But just know if you fall off the platform, you're out. As you continue DPSing the boss, eventually he will spawn two more of these wheels, so you'll have four of them to watch out for. But uh -oh. the real major mechanic you need to watch out for is his frontal. This frontal is called No Morgan Smash, and you'll notice the boss have like a lightning animation on top of him. And if you're hit by this cast, you will be one shot because it will knock you off of the platform and you will die. The way to dodge this is to look at the boss's feet. And we do this because it's a lot yep. easier to notice the direction the boss is facing. It actually can be a little bit confusing with his animations if you're looking at his hands or anything like that. Just look at the boss's feet. Trust me, it'll be way easier for Avoid you. Avoid feet frontal. those mechanics, at 25%, the boss will start casting another ability called Claw. What's that? This is where he will randomly target one member in the raid and then charge at that member. Once he reaches you, he will do a ton of damage and pick you up in his hand, kind of like flailing you around as if you were his main weapon. This person needs to be topped off on HP and expect a ton of healing to make sure that they don't die. Or you can do things to avoid this completely. You can actually blink the charge. Okay. You can ice block the charge. I think you can feign death and vanish the charge. So just be aware, you're going to want to try to mitigate this as much as possible and then the boss is down. When you guys are picked up by the boss, can you still use abilities? Can you use a hellstone? Can you heal yourself? Can you cast a uh, drain life? Can you... No, you can do nothing. Okay, another question. All of these mechanical monsters, can you drain life them? Can you bleed them? Can you still use all of your normal abilities on these monsters? You can do whatever you want. Okay. The Electrocutioner okay, in good. true form will put positive and negative charges throughout the raid. Make sure to tank them against the wall, and if you get the negative charge, just run away from the raid. You'll notice this because it's a huge circle lightning animation around the player that has it, and if it's on the tank, just make sure everyone else is... I need to rewind here for a second. Hold up. What is he saying? What the fuck is he talking about? Possible, and then the boss is down. The Electrocutioner huh? in true form will put positive and negative charges throughout the raid. Make uh -oh. sure to tank him against the wall, and if you get the negative charge, just run away from the raid. You'll notice this because it's a huge circle lightning animation around the player that has it, and if it's on the tank, just make sure everyone else is outside of the range of that circle. The main mechanic is dealing with the chain lightning. This will target the furthest player away from the boss himself, and then that will chain to the two closest members next to that furthest player. And once you're hit by this, you will receive a deep... Uh-huh, then what? Debuff, that means if you get hit by this again while you have that debuff, you will get one shot. Basically, what you want to do is have two rage uh... groups just standing out of three people. When one of them gets hit by the chain lightning, then the other range group takes a step back, and that range group takes a step forward. Realistically, to do the most damage, you would actually have one range group just stand still the whole time, and then a healer group that moves forward and back to make sure that the other range group is targeted. If you don't have six uh -huh. range players, you can use melee to stand closer to the person that is getting targeted by the chain lightning of course again that is on the furthest player away from the boss and if any of the players that are supposed to soak get targeted by the negative charge just have them move out of the group and send someone else to go soak the mechanical menagerie is four bosses all at once and all of these are like engineering summon trinket items like the explosive sheep or mechanical dragonling but just know you need to down these all at the same time or near the same time or else they oh. will repair themselves and come back to life with extra hp the sheep can be kited the entire time just have chat is it a fun raid is this a fun raid do we like the bosses in the raid or is it like fucking annoying it is fun. We like it. We like it. Okay, no? Your guild said it was fun? Okay. Because there were... I'm trying to remember back to BFD. Um, the first boss, the Aqua Elemental guy, I fucking hated. And the Murloc boss was not fun either. I hate the bosses where you have to DPS. Stop DPS. Okay, DPS. Stop DPS. Okay, DPS. I don't like that. So hopefully this is fun range deal damage to it because it does a pulsing aoe stun then you're going to want two tanks for the other mobs an off tank taking the mechanical dragon mob and the main tank taking the hold up i'm going to restart this sorry else to go soak 
The Mechanical <laughs> Menagerie is four bosses all at once, and all of these are like engineering summon trinket items, like the Explosive Sheep or Mechanical Dragonling. But just know you need to down these all at the same time, or near the same time, or else they will repair themselves and come back to life with extra HP. The Sheep can be kited the entire time, just have ranged deal damage to it because it does a pulsing AoE stun. Then you're going to want two tanks for the other mobs, an off tank tanking the Mechanical Dragon mob, and the main tank does a pulsing AoE stun. Then you're going to want two tanks for the other mobs, an off tank tanking the Mechanical Dragon mob, and the main tank taking the Squirrel and the Battle Chicken. The Dragonling will randomly do a Frontal Cone Fire Blast, make sure that the raid does not get hit by that. But I would keep the Dragonling close to the other one so it can dragon mob and the main tank taking the squirrel and the battle chicken the dragonling will randomly do a frontal cone fire blast make sure that the raid does not get hit by that okay but I would keep the Dragonling close to the other one so it can take a little bit of cleave damage. Now the Squirrel will randomly do AoE damage to the raid, and the Battle Chicken will lay eggs. You just want to burn those eggs down right away to keep things easy. The Battle Chicken also will get a Battle Squawk up, which basically is a bloodlust on all of the adds. Just get ready to use cooldowns whenever that's up. If your healers or casters are struggling with mana at all, you'll notice these red buttons. Um, chat, should we have like a designated AoE, sorry, not AoE, a designated uh, caster DPS tank for the sheep? Like, it's, it's, it's the job of one range DPS to maintain threat on that, and they're just kind of sort of kiting it. That's what you did? Okay, okay. So, and, th and that's, I don't know, prob which, whichever, whichever caster DPS maybe is your hardest pumper, uh, they're doing the most threat, he's the designated guy buttons by the vents all around the room if you click that button you get back a ton of mana but you're also hit for like 670 damage so be aware wait hold up what what battle chicken also will get a battle squawk up which basically is a bloodlust on all of the ads just get oh the sheep is just running around randomly so so you, you have casters nuking it but it doesn't really have like a threat table it's just sort of like ping-ponging from person to person randomly and it just wanders okay okay then get ready to use cooldowns whenever that's up if your healers okay. or casters are struggling mm -hmm. with mana at all you'll notice these red buttons by the vents all around the room if you click that button you get back a ton of mana but you're also hit for like 670 damage so be aware you're trading hp for mana but it definitely can keep you topped up and it can help the healers significantly once you down them all at the same time make sure to loot them and then move away from from the middle of the room because the last boss will spawn right here and there's like no warning and no delay so he will womp you if you're just still standing there this last boss is uh -oh. mega gear thermoplug and it's a four phase encounter where the first three phases are going to be one fire ice in the second phase and then nature or poison in the third phase and the last okay. phase is like voltron where all the zoids come together and form a mega mech each of the first three phases will transition <laughs> at 50% on the boss, so just know you don't need to burn it entirely. During each phase, there will be bombs that spawn from the vents around the room. And when these vents are open, you can just close them by clicking that button we were talking about earlier. Have mobile range classes, the best ones would be mages, be ready to blink to these vents and press the button. If you're fast enough, you can even close the vents before any bombs spawn, but usually it'll be one to two. You can CC or slow these and then just burn them down. They have something like less than 300 HP, so one attack should take it out. In the first phase, tank the boss towards the entrance of the room and on one of these sides. When he starts casting the flamethrower, you're going to want to start kiting him to the other side. This is because if you... Two. You can CC or slow these and then just burn them down. They have something like less than 300 HP, so one attack should take it out. In the first phase, tank the boss towards the entrance of the room and on one of these sides. When he starts casting the flamethrower, you're going to want to start kiting him to the other side. This is because if you get hit by the flame damage here, you will get a stacking debuff that does more and more damage to you. So when do you swap? Sorry. Take it out. In the first phase, tank the boss towards the entrance of the room and on one of these sides. When he starts casting the flamethrower, you're going to want to start kiting him to the other side. This is because if you get hit by the flame damage here, you will get a stacking debuff that does more and more damage to you. So your tank could take a ton of damage if they have too many stacks. 
You can also have an off tank taunt or even a hunter pet taunt to reset the stacks. They only actually last on you for 15 seconds. Remember to deal with the fire bombs that are spawning and get ready for phase two. Phase two will be the frost phase. The boss will pulse an AOE frost damage that actually stacks up and will slow everyone in the raid for each stack they have. This is dispellable because it is a magic debuff, and you can also completely ignore this mechanic if you just use free action potions. Each stack on the raid will actually increase okay. the boss's damage to the tank whenever he hits them with his tank buster mechanic, Super Cooled Smash. So make sure that you do not have a lot of stacks on the raid or else the tank will get one shot. And either way, this still will hit the tank for a- I'm gonna, I'm gonna just wanna hear this again. They have. This is dispellable because it is a magic debuff, and okay. you can also completely ignore this mechanic if you just use free action potions. Each stack on the raid will act- Okay, so chat, the second we go into phase two, should everyone pop a fap? Every single person in the raid pops a fap when phase two starts? Yeah? Okay. Um. Okay, I, I, that's gonna help a lot probably, right? Uh, no, it's a waste. Uh, why? Uh, fap on the cast of the spell, not at the start of the phase. Uh, yes, it's gonna be back up for ultimate phase. Um, blessing of feet or freedom is amazing. Well, we're playing Horde, we don't have that. You'd rather mana pot, uh, save it for the last phase. Well, it sounds like we're gonna have the pot CD back up for the final phase, right? How, lo how long is the fight? Where's Warcraft logs? Um, <clears throat> let me see here. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to look at like okay this is this is the this guy is the best DPSer in the world and on his boss kill this was a 3 minute 10 uh yeah uh, no 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 huh oh this was a 140 kill Chat, is is this possible this guy did a 140 kill on on the final boss is that a scam log? Is that is that not even possible? Okay, I'm gonna click on a different guy. No way. That seems really fast. This here, okay, thermoplug. This is a seven minute kill. Okay, yeah, yeah. There's gotta be something weird with that other fucking log. That's a, that's a seven minute. How about this guy? This is the clon clon dog. What do you do, bro? Uh, let me take a look here. One thirty six. How? What's going on? Phrenology. I'm looking at this guy. Uh, encounters. This guy's got a seven minute kill. It's probably like a seven minute kill. Okay. Like, there, there, I think there's some weird logs going on here. People are being weird with the logs. So, you probably have the potion back up. It's probably fine. Actually, increase the boss's damage to the tank whenever he hits them with his tank buster mechanic, super cooled smash. I just want to hear this one more time. Stack they have. This is dispellable an AoE frost damage that actually stacks up and will slow everyone in the raid for each stack they have. This is uh -huh. dispellable because it is a magic debuff and you can also completely ignore this mechanic if you just use free action potions. Each mm -hmm. stack on the raid will actually increase the boss's damage to the tank whenever he hits them with his tank buster mechanic, super cooled smash. Mm. So make sure that you do not have a lot of stacks on the raid or else the tank will get one shot. And either way, this still will hit the tank for a ton of damage, so be ready to heal. Make sure the range deal with the frost bombs and get ready for phase three. Phase 3 is the phase that most guilds were super stuck okay. on because the main mechanic is the boss will cast an AoE damage channel that will literally wipe the raid. All you need to do here is interrupt. But this does not have a cast bar, so just be aware of when it's happening. Make sure somebody kicks or you cast Counterspell. This phase is actually probably the easiest because of that, so make sure you're dealing with the bombs and get ready for phase 4, the Voltron phase. In the final phase, the boss has all okay. of the mechanics you dealt with earlier. That means you still need to kite the boss, you also need to dispel the magic debuff or use a free action potion, and you need to kick that AoE damage ability that's doing the poison damage to wipe your raid. In this phase, you also will have to deal with bombs of every single element. These will spawn one after another from uh -huh. the same vents, so if you close the vents quickly, you won't have to deal with too much. And since this is the final phase, you actually do need to bring the Mechazoid down to zero HP. So be ready to burn uh -huh. it 
right all the way down once you have defeated okay. this in true gnomish fashion the actual boss mecha gear will jump out of his mech and you just need to burn him down he doesn't really do anything he's very easy to defeat so once you've actually downed the major boss then just burn him and congratulations you have now cleared gnomergan in phase two of season whoa of i hope everybody gets all the loot they're looking for because the drops seem to be just fun the defib staff for the mages okay well this doesn't really seem that bad i don't know if you by the way if you guys want these notes i will uh copy paste these into my discord server if you type exclamation point discord i'm gonna paste these into the classic web channel if any of you cares about having these all right they are in my discord server right now